everyone welcome back to my youtube channel now in this video what we are going to see is we are going to see you know various products that are present in gcp and what is basically the purpose of all those products and where they fit ex uh, exactly in the software development uh, you know kind of uh, engineering practices so basically what i have done here is uh, as you can see on the screen that i have tried to uh, you know categorize uh, a kind of a purpose and then we will see what kind of products are available within gcp to do these kinds of activities like for example what are products available to store the data right uh, so what are the mechanism in which you can store the data in gcp what all the data processing engines are uh, available like for example let's say you are trying to build a enterprise data software uh, enterprise maybe a data ingestion pipeline or something like that uh, using gcp where you have to you know write some logic to process the data to run uh, the business logic uh, to extract the data from the source do some kind of uh, data processing and load it to some third party system or external systems so kind of a etl process let's say if you are trying to uh, basically perform then which all processing engines uh, that are available which will help you to actually crunch uh, the data right so that is the second category second major category you know uh, that is in demand or people uh, use uh, it a lot then let's say you you have developed your software you have developed your pipeline and now you want it to deploy it into a kind of a production environment uh, and make it available for the actual users to use the feature that you have implemented or uh, developed right then what are the development uh, architecture deployment uh, sorry deployment architectures deployment strategies that are currently available in gcp uh, you know the kind of orchestration kubernetes we keep on hearing about all those things will fit into this kind of a layer which will help you to deploy your uh, application right and then last but not the least the networking aspect of uh, the gcp uh, where you can you know if you wanted to put some kind of restrictions uh, these services should be available on internet this service should not be available on internet so uh, creation of virtual private clouds or vpcs shared vpcs firewall rules all these kinds of uh, things uh, you can impose over uh, a environment uh, right which is kind of maybe a uh, organization or a project that you developed uh, within your uh, gcp environment so all those things uh, comes under the networking part right so let's go ahead and first uh, see what all products that are available to store the data in gcp right so now let's say if you wanted to store the file data the file systems basically right where the data lies into multiple files let it be the text files audio files video files there are let's say some images then you can use the google product as gcs right which is your google cloud system right then there are some products that are available uh, if you wanted to store the data in a tabular format which can be queried at a later point of time and that is be known as there are two products available cloud sql and cloud spanner so these are the you know kind of rdbms which google gives you cloud sql and cloud spanner both are fully managed uh, database services under cloud sql uh, it gives you uh, the facility to avail three uh, databases mysql postgres uh, sql and the third one is sql uh, server right so basically under cloud sql you can cloud uh, configure your cloud sql instance to facilitate either mysql or postgres sql or sql server and cloud spanner is again uh, in house a product of gcp which again has some kind of you know features that we will see uh, in the specific uh, tutorial about cloud spanner but at a high level these three services are available 
oh sorry i forgot one more which is a big one uh, really in gcp world which is big query right So BigQuery is again a product that is available using which you can store, store huge volumes of data. And you know, there are very, uh, very more modulus function that are available, uh, which will help you uh, to query your data, to run analytics uh, on your data and whatnot. There are lots of features that are available. So this is about the Google storage products. Right, where you can actually go ahead and store uh, the data now when it comes to data processing engine right so let's say you are trying to uh, develop a pipeline using some some kind of programming language like python or java right and you wanted to read data from let's say google cloud system or google cloud storage which is your gcs and let's say you wanted to move it to some kind of cloud sql or bigquery any destination can be possible right then you will have to build a data entire data pipeline right and for that you will have to use to write your business logic you will have to use some kind of processing engine right so which all processing engine that are available within uh, the gcp is something called as let's say you have data proc okay so this is a Apache Spark based, uh, you know, kind of a product given by GCP, which internally uses uh, Apache Spark libraries, right? And then uh, GCP has written some kind of wrapper services around that. And, uh, you know, they are uh, making it available as a new product called as data prop. But internally it gives you all the facilities uh, that Apache Spark gives you in terms of basically launching a job doing the Spark submit. Then uh, the same UI available to, you know, basically uh, visit the logs and, you know, track your jobs. But there is there are some other features al also that are available uh, as like you can scale up your cluster, scale down your cluster right based on uh, the data requirements right then the third uh, then the second one is available which we call it as data flow now what is data flow as data proc uses apache spark capabilities uh, behind the hood on the same line the library which which is nowadays very well known which is apache beam library and data flow is a gcp product which internally uses apache beam as a data processing library right so whatever advantages that comes with apache beam all those advantages with some more like job monitoring uh, checking the status of the jobs and some more basically those are available uh, as a product in data flow then a very specific engine data processing engine google uh, has launched is BigQuery engine or we call it as BQ engine right so let's say if you are trying to move the data from any source basically irrespective of what source you are dealing with if you wanted to move the data if your destination is BigQuery right then you can definitely use or even Google recommends that uh, to use the BQ engine as your data processing engine and uh, do all your business logic using this particular BQ engine there are lots of you know uh, third party connectors available uh, you, you, if even like apart from third party connector it has its own terminal as well right own shell as well using which you can uh, you know practice or load the data from one storage system to bigquery right so all the python connectors available java connectors groovy and then uh, C++, all the languages are being supported. We will take a look at this. But at a high level, if your destination system is BigQuery, then definitely it is recommended even by the Google as well. Because the way BigQuery engine is being architected is, you know, uh, they like Google has not exposed it. What is the architecture of BigQuery and all? 
but yes it is very fast and in terms of the performance throughput of your data ingestion uh, jobs you will get a more better performance that's what uh, google always claims right so bqm engine if your destination is bigquery and there are lots of other features that are available that we will see in actual and obviously you can write your own like uh, let's categorize that as a custom if you have you know if you want to write your own logic build your own pipeline build uh, the capabilities to process the data right on your own way then obviously you just can code for it and then deploy it okay so guys this is about the you know mainly about the data storage products and data processing engine which you can use in the subsequent tutorial i'll talk about the deployments and networking part of it thank you guys thanks for watching this tutorial and i'll see you in the next one